Hello everyone. It brings me tremendous pleasure to present to you my final capstone exam for the AET program. Before I begin this presentation, I would like to share a personal story with you. Back in the fall of 2015, I was given an opportunity to showcase my teaching experience and knowledge at the International Coltesel Conference in Seoul, South Korea, where some of the top lecturers and experts in the field of linguistics are invited to demonstrate their exceptional teaching techniques. I have done presentations before, but receiving an invitation was a monumental step in my professional career. Nervous but excited, I prepared a present presentation displaying my instructional ideas. I was sure that this would enthrall the audience. However, my vision of what the outcome would be like after the presentation and the reality were drastically different. I'll make a quick reference to 500 Days of Summer as this parallels Joseph Gordon-Levitt's experience. I imagine that max capacity of attendees listening attentively glued to my presentation, blown away by my ideas and strategies I incorporated my lesson design. What I got instead was an empty lecture room. Half of the attendees walked out early into the presentation and the other attendees were browsing their phones disengaged. This was a gut punch. After a presentation ended, I felt flustered, disillusioned, embarrassed, and disheartened. I sat quietly for an hour on a bench thinking to myself, what just happened? This was a psychological blow, and it brought me back to earth. I have done so well in my professional career until this point. Why was I so defeated emotionally? I put my heart, soul, and energy to have this feeling of failure hanging over me. It took almost two years to let go of the disappointment I felt on that day. My confidence as a presenter was severely bruised and damaged. It wasn't until I realized that it doesn't have to end here. A good friend of mine recommended me to pursue a master's degree in adult education and training. Reluctant at first, I took the initiative to apply to the program, and fortunately, I was accepted. This was a painful experience that brought me here. Just like Quinn Tarantino's Pulp Fiction and several of the instructional design models presented in the program, this presentation will not be linear. As I attempt to synthesize my incredible experience throughout the AET program in 50 minutes or less, I would like the focus to be on these significant revelations. First, recognizing my own shortcomings welcome the possibility to seek better ways to grow as an individual. Two, being a practitioner of several of the adult learning theories will lead to more desirable results. And three, self Actualization would only occur when I motivate myself to step out of my comfort zone and push myself to ascend to new heights. My journey from beginning to end has been arduous but rewarding, so I am glad I am here. Self-actualization did not occur overnight for me. It was a compilation of experiences that led me here. Maslow's hierarchy of needs helped put my own life and challenges into perspective. I have moved up and down the pyramid on several occasions during this journey. My first hurdle in the AET program occurred shortly after the birth of my first child on September 2017. Suffering from sleep deprivation, I lost complete focus and control of my time. As hard as I tried, I wasn't able to achieve the level of success my professor expected of me. I felt I reached rock bottom and I was on the verge of giving up before I started. Thankfully, a Skype call to my advisor changed my mind. Determined to keep going, I had time to reflect and regroup. I referred to old journals and newspapers growing up, and I immediately thought of all the great role models I looked up to growing up, most notably athletes that were revered as legends in their profession. Jerry Rice, Walter Payton, Cal Ripken Jr. What would their lives be like if they didn't follow through? Jerry amassed 22,895 yards receiving, which is approximately equivalent to half a marathon. Walter Payton, better known as Sweetness, won hearts of millions of fans for his tenacity, 
his hard-nosed running style and his compassion for his fellow mankind. Cal Ripken, Mr. Iron Man, played in 2,632 consecutive Major League games. He is the epitome of grit and dedication to his craft. What do they have in common with the theories we studied in class? Each person had a vision. They visualized the outcome and set goals to accomplish. This parallels the same principles that Benjamin Bloom, Robert Gagne taught me. It is to see the end result first and make a strategic plan to accomplish those goals. Gagne's nine events of instruction and Bloom's taxonomy of cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domains, as well as Fink's taxonomy of significant learning enabled me to be a much better strategist. More importantly, it was the examples of perseverance, empathy, devotion to the profession that had a significant influence on me because I too want to achieve their level of success when I hang it up. Let's revisit the story at the beginning of this presentation. After careful reflection and introspection, the outcome of the presentation turned out differently for me because I failed to recognize one simple fact. The preferred learning styles of young learners and adult learners are vastly different. I was lecturing to the adult in the same way I would lecture young learners. My presentation style was not fit for the adult audience. I made this realization when I learned about Malcolm Knowles' theory of andragogy. This principle stated that adults need to be involved in the planning and eval evaluation of instruction. Adults are interested in learning subjects that have immediate relevance and impact to their daily life or job. And adult learning is more problem-centered rather than content-oriented. With Ledowski explored the depths of adult motivation. What motivates adult learners? What motivates me? What is my purpose in life? How can I make my shortcomings work for me? What adjustments should I make? I discovered that adult learners prefer material and information that is relevant and has immediate applicability to their lives. Adult learners want to use their experience in prior learning as directly as possible while learning. Thanks to this revelation, I adjusted and adapted my facilitation style to fit the adult learner and the young learners that are preparing to enroll in higher education classes. The EDAD 624 Adult Learning course exposed me to several ways adult learners acquire knowledge best. Two adult learning styles stood out for me. The first is self-directed learning. With my high school students, at the beginning of the semester, I had them complete a form that ensures they are meeting their linguistic goals by signing a learning contract. Due to the drastic life changes of COVID-19 caused for the entire world, classes quickly shifted to online learning. Despite learning became more of a norm and due to the fact that there was little interaction between classmates, SDL became the optimal way that helps students stay focused and accountable with their learning goals. I remember the summer of 2017 like it was yesterday, where I enrolled in my first graduate level course. I vividly remember the excitement. Facilitating seven ways of learning captivated me. Among those, dialogical thinking made a profound impact in my instruction design. This course made reading Tuesdays with Maury mandatory. I remember reading the book and watched the film several years back. However, I have a much deeper appreciation for the book now and what Maury accomplished. It wasn't just an entertaining book, it was empowering. Maury enforced several of the key concepts that the AHC program emphasized. First, is to make learning environment inclusive and personal, where all students feel safe to share their experiences and opinions without the fear of judgment. And second, to create opportunities for dialogical thinking. Just the way Maury motivated his learners, I envisioned my adult learning courses to be similar. And how did this all connect to my philosophy as an adult educator? To me, the role of an adult educator is far more than just presenting content and information. Each and every lesson should set a chain of events that makes the experience of learning to be transformative. This means causing great change in perception, values, and belief, thus influencing someone to take an active approach to ameliorate his or her life and the life of others. The Education 651 course, Multicultural Special Population, was definitely that for me. Throughout my life, I have never given much thought to the social injustices because for the most part, I have been privileged. As a male Hispanic, 
I never experienced some of the difficult and painful discrimination that some of my mo minority friends had. As a minority on paper, it opened doors for me to be accepted to Texas A&M University, despite not having the most distinguished academic accomplishments as some of my white peers. Was this reverse discrimination or privilege? I have been blessed most of my life. The cycle of socialization allowed me to examine my own past and my own cultural identity. This course has brought attention to many of the injustices existing not only in North America, but also throughout the world. Prejudice and discrimination are prevalent even in Asia. The belief that the lighter your skin is, the more beautiful you are, thus creating opportunities for employment. Most of the darker skinned Asians are denied opportunities of investment despite their intelligence and credentials. Ageism and sexism are also two common problems that prohibit many qualified individuals from advancing in their profession. Perhaps the most transformative lesson in the AG program was when I read the book White Frailty and discussed the term color blindness, which elevated my level of awareness. I haven't heard these words growing up, but it became a realization that it's the absence of acknowledgement that is more startling. J. Elliot's blue-eyed, brown-eyed exercise had a profound impact on me. Although her exercise was considered controversial by many, I felt her demonstrations and continuous work to end racism were incredibly transformative because it made me empathize with the marginalized and oppressed groups. It's this transfer of learning that made an impression on me. Thanks to this lesson, I became a more determined, more aware of these injustices that it motivated me to create a proposal known as Blind Recruitment to the Board of Education or the person's ethnicity, age, nationality, religion, school affiliation, or gender did not matter in selecting the most appropriate candidate for the job. I even suggested that a photo of a person should not be included in the resume. One of the ways I mirrored my experiences at the AZ program is by bringing awareness to social injustices to my high school students. During a lesson about current events, the death of George Floyd became a well-known issue, so I asked difficult questions to my students. Was it right for the officer to abuse his position of power? What if an Asian person had been stopped by the police without any justification? How would you feel, and how might have you reacted? How might have you handled a similar situation if you were given that power? Because of lack of diversity in South Korean schools, this was a truly transformative experience, not only for me, but my students. And nothing felt more empowering than the reaction of my high school seniors had when they saw the anti-Asian attacks on the news as a result of COVID-19. For those students who have never experienced discrimination, this led to an astounding reflection. How can we help minority groups in Korea to ensure that they get equal treatment? The most profound takeaway I took from this program is the realization that we, educators, have the power to transform our lives and the people we are close to. This quote from one of my favorite books, Pedagogy of the Press, put things in perspective. Leaders do not act dialogically, but insist on imposing their decisions, do not organize the people, they manipulate them. They do not liberate, nor are they liberated, they oppress. So what has the AT program done for me? It has made me whole as a person. To become more confident, caring, loving, nurturing, sympathetic, inquisitive, progressive, and prepared husband, father, and educator. The AT program instilled in me values that I will take with me for the rest of my life. It allowed me to envision my future. What does my future look like in 20, 10, or even five years? And when I close my eyes, I see what I want and how I want to get there. What does the future of language acquisition look like? I want to end this presentation by thanking the amazing mentors that have captivated my imagination and inspired me to dream big. But also, I want to acknowledge the amazing people that I met throughout the AET program. You've all been part of this journey. I hope you cross paths one day.